Hey folks, so now we're going to start intermediate sketching. Uh, now I need to get the actual instructions up while I'm setting up. What you can do is turn off uh, the front pane, the front uh, plane, excuse me, and the right plane, and then hop into top view. Now, um, step one is just to create a sketch. So we're going to create a sketch here. And step two is to create um, a couple of lines. So the first line we're going to make is a construction line. So we can click line or L and then construction or Q. And then we'll make that dash line um, that we want to go vertical from the origin. So it starts coincident to the bird, the origin. So after we do that, what we can do is create two more lines is what they're asking. We want one horizontal that's coincident to that origin. And then we want one that's vertical. Once we have these two, then what we can do is actually move on to step three, which I believe is making a three point arc. Now in our arc drop down, or if you hit A, you can create a three point arc. You just wanna make that first point coincident, the second point, I believe him kind of go anywhere. Um, the biggest thing that matters right now is that the third click you make, um, the bend of the arc is inward towards uh, our construction line. Now, if you have these, our next step, if you hit escape um, before you start drawing again, is to actually use the mirror tool. Now it's up here, it looks like an L, and then it has like a backwards L, a mirrored L, and it's gonna ask us for a construction line that we can uh, use as a mirror line. Uh, if we click this line, now we can click our other lines that we drew previously, and we get what we drew over here, over here on the right. Now, we want to hit escape, so we stop mirroring stuff. And our next step, which will be slide five, is to make uh, a top to our shape here. Now, we're going to use the tangent arc, different from the three-point arc. We're going to make our first point coincident to this left point here, make our second point coincident to this point here. Now, we've got a closed shape, it's shaded. The next big step is for us to make sure that our points here are coincident to each other. Now, I have to zoom in because they're really close together, but this point needs to be coincident to the top of my construction line. So I can go up to my uh, constraints up here next to dimension. Some of you may have them in a drop down, and I can hit coincident or the shortcut is I, and I can make this point coincident to this point. Now, hopefully nothing's broken, no funky business down here. Uh, it looks good. Um, that is step six. And our next step in step seven is to start dimensioning things. Now, the first dimension that I wanna go over is actually how to dimension this arc here. Um, so I'm just gonna hit escape to get out of this tool. I'm gonna hit dimension. It asks for a radius right here. You'll see it uh, in the actual, um, plans here, this R125, they tell you to dimension it over here. Uh, and the way to get that dimension is to click on our point and to click on this line. And it doesn't always work. Uh, and that I, I need to actually look that up. Um, there we go. I just clicked on this line here and now it's actually working. So we have this here. We should be able to put 125 in. Let's see how much we break it. And that looks great. Uh, now we can put a dimension up here for 75 and again i don't need another dimension over here i can do another dimension but it'll probably gray out because i've already said how big it needs to be over here but again just click on this line um, and you'll be good um, if i hit this say i want this to be 50 and then the distance between this point and this point um, they have down as 125. so how are we looking right now got 125, 50, 75. I think that's about right. There's one last thing that we got to do from here to here. So the length of our construction line. And they want this to be 200. So it'll make our shape a little bit stout. So that is step seven. And in step eight, they start asking us to use the offset tool. So O is offset. Uh, you don't want to be offset. He's not a nice rapper, uh, not a nice man. Uh, you can hit O. I like to call this tool the Snoopy tool. It kind of looks a little bit like Snoopy. Uh, and you want to start by offsetting um, this 
circle up here. Now, you can drag this arrow here or you can hit enter. And they say that this offset needs to be 40 millimeters. Now again, if you're working in inches, up here, workspace units, switch them over to millimeters right now. Just do it forever, leave them that way. <laughs> um, what we're gonna do next, so uh, for our step nine, is to sketch uh, a vertical line. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just plop a line in right around here is where they ask for you to put it in. So we're just gonna sketch that in there. And then if I hit escape, and I actually don't want that dimension, I just hit enter by accident. Um, come on, there you go. Uh, now it's asking for us to do, what was it? A, um, another tangent arc. So. We're going to grab tangent arc again, and we're going to create a tangent arc from there to there. And I'll hit escape so I can stop drawing stuff. That's step 10. And in step 11, we're just mirroring what we just made. So mirror, we've got to select a mirror line. That's our construction line. Now we can click those two lines we just made. And step 12 is creating another tangent arc between this point and this point. So grab that tool again, tangent arc, boom, a boom, and then we're a dudo. So step 13, we are going to create a rectangle down here. And we wanna make it a center point rectangle that's coincident to our construction line. And so I can just create center point rectangle. I just grab that button up in the top and I can create that rectangle. And now in step 14, we just gotta start dimensioning all of this good stuff. So uh, starting kind of sort of from top to bottom, um, we wanna make a dimension from the top of our construction line to this tangent point down here. And this dimension, they say, needs to be 100. This curve here needs to have a radius of 15. This curve here, which is mirrored, needs to have a radius of 40. Now it looks like we have something broken over here. Let's see if we can make them coincident to each other. There we go, cool. And then finally, we gotta play around with our rectangle down here. I should be able to make this 20. This needs to be 80. The distance from make a dimension and go from here to here. It's gonna be 25 millimeters. Um, now that we have this, um, we should be able to hit check on our sketch and do our final uh, self check. Now um, it's going to ask you what the square footage uh, or square millimeters, excuse me, of this area is right here. And you'll see it uh, in the end of the tutorial. If I just hit next, 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 next. It's asking you the square millimeters of this area. Um, if you're having issues with that, uh, my uh, two cents is just make sure everything's connected. Um, and then just let me uh, grab me, let me help you check your file uh, and we'll make sure you're good to go. Because um, there are a bunch of uh, dimensions in here, a couple radiuses that might be a little bit uh, funky. So just let me know and I'll help you check it out. Um, if not, I'll see you next time. Uh, we're going to be moving on to actual 3D objects next time I see you. Um, so um, stay tuned for that. We'll be doing uh, part design using part studios instead of introduction to sketching like we have um, this last class. So um, stay tuned for that. I'll see you soon. All right, bye.